Let it get out of here. We're uh, all <laughs> just stupid giddy because we're in the same room together. Yeah, I tried to hold it in so much that I actually popped my ears. <laughs> it has been a long time since we've all been in the room together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we just, we're just sitting here giggling. <laughs> and then he hit the button for silence. <laughs> and I was still sputtering like a lawnmower that couldn't start. <laughs> Uh, So a quick announcement before we get into the episode. Just a reminder that May 24th is the deadline for our cosplay contest for our two-year anniversary. Um, You know, I have mentioned it before on the intro, and I realized that I hadn't talked about the prizes. They have mentioned the prizes on social media, but we are giving away a copy of Monster of the Week, a copy of Dungeon World, uh, a bunch of swag, as well as a pair of limited edition dice from Level Up Dice uh, that we got at C2E2. I think it's set like... 51 out of 150 so and you could submit your entries by posting them on twitter with the hashtag crit show cosplay or you can go to the crit show podcast.com slash anniversary to submit your entries there the deadline for that again is may 24th and we will announce the winner on may 27th during the intro for the episode you're looking at the calendar are these dates right where am i time has no meaning all i know is when may 24th is because it's also my birthday so if you want to send me a present crit show studios p.o box Something, something, Indianapolis, Indiana, <laughs> Greenwood, I don't remember. I think everybody listening right now should just, Jake's gift should be, even if you weren't planning on entering the cosplay contest, do your best Jake costume yes. and just send them all in. It's really easy. Don't shave for a while and don't... Put on armor. <laughs> and, but, uh, yeah, it's really easy. Super don't easy. shave and put on the armor that you have in your home already. Also, stilts, because he's really tall. He's a tall drink of water. Oh, I thought you meant because Jake travels around in the stilts. Most people don't know that, that that's his chosen method of... <laughs> no, it's because I'm 8 foot 11. And <laughs> we do like... a lot of forced perspective in the photos to make it not seem weird. He actually records on the second floor we're on. <laughs> <laughs> on the first floor. I record in the loft, but I'm standing on the first floor. <laughs> He's inspector gadgeting all over the place. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Uh, also, stay tuned. At the end of this episode, we're going to have a couple of announcements for you after the episode. Uh, and with that, it's time to let the recap roll. We can summon Koshe with this. Uh, do we have to actually, like, use it up? I don't know for sure. It could be used as bait and then we keep our promise. But it just doesn't hit me that that's the case. I mean, that's very cool and interesting. We can't do it. I agree. Can we spoof it? Like whatever is so unique about this that you think we could use it as bait or or spend it or something. Can we fake that? I imagine a, like a five second pause as he has presented that. And then both Jake and I just turning our heads to look at TJ. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will require a huge amount of power or fuel. I think mine is that it requires a rare or weird material because you are putting off so many types of energy. I think you need like a shield. It sucks that they ransacked the North Pole. Like they ripped Noel clean out of there. That's all though, right? They just took Noel out of there, didn't they? Do you think the power grid and shit is still intact? The three of you appear at the North Pole. So you get over to the power station and everything is still functioning. All right. And I'm going to turn on the shield. I think I'm close to TJ. Like I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but in my head, Koshe is probably going to come down right on the epicenter here, so I want to be here ready to engage when he does. So as the dome begins to pulse, you notice that the snow picks up and the wind outside starts to blow faster, and there's a crack of lightning, and in the lightning you see this large figure in the snow, and it's raising its hand, and it slams it down on the shield, and you've seen this before. It is the same large wind elemental that attacked the North Pole the last time you were here. Outside of the glowing dome, we see this air elemental with snow swirling around it, slamming its fist into the dome. Below, the three of you can hear the impact. What are you all doing? Shit, guys. Uh, Isn't that the same elemental that was controlled by the vampires? Vampire wizard? I thought there was nothing here. There was nothing close, but maybe they were just far enough out to see this thing pop up. Okay, what do we do? 
We can't leave here. I don't know when he's going to show up, but it could be any moment. Oh, shit. This thing gets through. We're screwed either way. I'll go look for them. I'll try to get through this and take them out. Okay, yeah. You you go do that. I'll stay here for when he shows up and be prepared to fight him. TJ, what do you do? I probably should go check on the shield to make sure it's holding with this thing pounding on it. Okay. All right. So the three of you split off into different directions. Tass, let's go with you first. So you turn and start making your way outside of the dome. Uh, Once you get outside of it, roll read a bad situation. Okay. Nine. Okay, you get a hold one. Like the idea I have in my head is trying to find the source of this. So I know that they're out there somewhere. Since this thing is an imminent threat outside of this dome trying to get in, should it be something like what's most vulnerable to me? Like, I know I can't really hurt the the elemental as it is, um, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm trying to formulate that in the thought of finding the source and how I can hurt it. Yeah, I think that in the snowstorm, you can see the shifting winds and you're able to start tracking the direction you think this air elemental is tethered from, if that makes sense. Like, there's yeah. all this wind whipping around, but you can see a small section of wind where the snow is always blowing straight towards it it's like following the beams it is exactly like following the beam hell yeah Uh, so you start to head in that direction tj you get out to the exterior and start looking at the shields everything right now seems to be holding up what do you want to try to do do you want to wait till something goes wrong and try to fix it do you want to try to preemptively adjust these somehow i'm wondering if i can't like siphon more energy from somewhere in the the north pole but the only energy i know of is the generators that we looked at that were fine so maybe if i somehow get back to the generators and i can boost their power or something so you want to head back to the generator room and see if you can do something thing to up the power output that they're putting out yeah okay so you head back across the dome towards where the power plant is and you get inside i almost think this is gonna be a weird science again would you be inclined to agree you don't you don't have the normal science move yeah um ever since i became the monstrous i don't have like engineering or anything yeah anymore. so i think i'm just gonna have to build a machine that amps up the power on the generator all right roll weird science that's a 14. Okay, what is your requirement? Um, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I think it requires a huge amount of power or fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to get on. a bunch of power from? I Are you trying to make like a perpetual motion machine? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how you're going to power this power. Is this the car fueling the sub again? <laughs> I was thinking of getting a couple of uh, hamsters in a wheel and just yeah. you know, uh, no, I've got my electro blaster. Oh. Yeah. I mean, as the monsters, I've been literally biting and clawing at things. So I don't think my electro blaster is too much of a sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you can use the electro blaster to up the output on these. Um, It'll take you a couple minutes to rig up. All right. So Jake, you are standing out in the middle of the dome and the air elemental is pounding. What are you doing? I think I've got like the shield on my arm and the nail in my other hand. And I'm kind of like zigging and zagging just around the area, like keeping my eyes out. Like, I don't know where he's going to come from, but I want my motion to be unpredictable when he does. (laughs) I know that there's no way I can be prepared for this fight. So the only advantages I can think of are tiny and dumb, but like, Hopefully, just for, ooh, just for a second, I stepped when he didn't expect me to when he shows up, and I don't get immediately smote. Rory, a bad situation. Oh, boy. Seven. You get a hold one. I guess. Are there any dangers I haven't noticed? In the distance, very small, you can see an area in the sky that has no light whatsoever. It is the epitome of black. And it's growing larger as it travels towards the dome. And you can tell by the trajectory that it's on, it's going to land at the center where that machine is located. Okay, I want to go find some cover somewhere, like where I can peek around a corner and have line of sight on that, but that I can spring on him when he lands. Tash, you have been following the trail of this air elemental, and you come across a familiar scene. There's a figure sitting on the ground, muttering and making hand gestures, and this energy is rippling off of them into the sky. 
and there are two other people flanking them holding swords. Uh, what is the setup as far as like the snow and the drifts and stuff here? Like, is there even the remotest chance of me army crawling up and surprising one of them? I mean, you could always try. (laughs) Um, There's a lot of snow. It is very heavy. It's hard to see when these vampires come into your line of sight. They can't be more than 20 feet away. Okay. I think I have to try. I have to do what I can to get the drop on at least one if I want to see if I can 3v1 these guys. All right, we're locked under pressure. Ooh. Eight. So you can sneak up on one of the guards and get the drop on them, but the intensity of the storm is going to increase. You're going to take a minus one forward on your next movement-based thing because you're a little numb on your hands and your feet. Or in traversing the space, you're going to drop something. You're going to lose something. Oh, I can't even think of what I have besides the thing I need to hurt them. So that's bad. I think it's just going to be, I think it's just the minus one forward. Okay, describe this to me. How are you springing this trap? Um, I, I mean, I want to essentially spring up out of this swirling snow and storm and already have the spear in an arc to take this guy's head off. All right, you leap out of the snow, the spear in mid-twirl, and cut through this guard's neck, and the head falls off into the snow. The other one turns and looks at you and raises its sword. Jake, this dark field, enters the dome and touches down at the center, and it coalesces into the familiar form of Koshe the Deathless. Since the last time you saw him, his scars are all gone. He's got a, it's weird to say, healthier look to him because his skin is still pale, but his muscles aren't as ropey as they were before. But he still drags the large sword behind him, and he sees this machine in front of him. Hmm. And he bends down to examine it, and you see him pause. And then he turns into black smoke that just dissipates into the air. Uh, is he is he gone gone? Or can I see, like, the mist about? Uh, roll read a bad situation. <laughs> Four. Yeah, you think that he is gone. That he saw the machine, realized it wasn't real, and took off. Well, I'm gonna go over to where he was standing by the machine and see if I can pick up a trail, I guess, because I can't just let him be gone. So you start walking forward and you get about two or three feet away from the machine. And for a brief second, you realize that the air there has a shimmer to it before the wind is knocked out of you as you are hit by Koshe as he materializes and you are knocked 20, 25 feet away and you hit the ground hard. And when you hit the ground, you realize that both your hands are empty. TJ, you have gotten this hooked up to the generator and you activate it and you hear all of the generators start to run a little faster. And outside, that orange glow gets a little brighter, almost to the point where when you look outside, you can't see the elemental anymore. Nice. I'm going to go back outside and keep an eye on what's going on out there, I guess. Yeah. And as you step out the door, the first thing you see is Jake getting knocked backwards through the air by Koshe. Oh, shit. I'm going to go see if I can't try and hold Koshe's arms behind his back. So maybe Jake will have a better shot of getting him. And you don't have no limits, correct? I don't. Not anymore. Not that I ever did. No, I had it as magic. Um, yeah. So, no, I don't. You get low to the ground and you sprint at Koshe and he pivots right before you get to him. He grabs your wrist and throws you at Jake. The two of you collide and you both take one point of damage, armor defeating. He looks at you both and slowly starts to walk in your direction. I must say, since the day you released me, you have been exceptionally difficult to track down. You are not what I expected to find here, Uh, but you will do. Tass, this guard has raised its sword and is charging towards you. What are you doing? I mean, I'm just going to chance taking it. I want to take his head off. Roll act under pressure. And I have a minus one forward. Still a 10. So you take three points of damage, not armor defeating, but you are able to spin around your spear again and take this one's head off. Uh, Yeah, that one actually stings a little bit. That got through a little bit of the armor. Jake and TJ, Koshe is slowly walking in your direction. What are you both doing? I dropped the thing. Uh, what? 
I lost the thing. It's somewhere in the snow. Oh, no. Uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> As you put your hand down in the snow to push yourself up, it closes around this seven inch long nail and it is cold to the touch, colder than the snow and the ice. Do I see him get it? I, I don't see why not. Oh my God. Okay. I'm just going to teleport behind Koshe and I'm going to try to pin his arms with no limits. All right. Roll no limits. Six. Now, you know what? I'm going to use a point of luck. All right. You grab a hold of Koshe and you feel something that you haven't felt in a long time. The energy from this luck flowing through your body. And it's something that is a welcome relief because you have been in a world now where that didn't exist. But this energy flows through you and you grab both of Koshe's arms and pin them behind his back. I'm going to charge Koshe with the nail then. So you charge forward and you jam this nail into Koshe's heart. Fuck yes. Got him. It goes in about halfway. As TJ drives this nail into Koshe's chest, Jake, roll read a bad situation. Three. TJ, as you push this nail into Koshe, there is pain that ripples through your body and you get black spots in your vision and you can feel that this nail as you push it into Koshe is draining your life and Jake from where you are holding Koshe at bay you feel Koshe's body tense up and this black energy ripples through him but you see the same energy rippling through TJ's body Tass, the last vampire has not acknowledged you. It is sitting still, trying to keep its task going. Oh, I am not even hesitating. I am going to take her head off. You spin the spear around and you take its head off. And as soon as the body hits the ground, the wind and the snow start to let up and the sky starts to clear. My first instinct is to kind of look around and see with the air cleared if there is any more of them. As you start to scan the area... About 50 yards north of where you are, you see sitting on the surface of the water, the Argonaut. TJ, you have pushed this nail halfway into Koshe's body, and it is hurting you very badly. I think I'm taking a look at Jake. Like, what is this? Koshe sees the look in your eyes, and he grins. And in your head, you can hear his voice. Remove it. Save yourself and let me free. I think as Koshe is telling me this, I'm I'm having like a memory backlash to the time when we were underground at Baba Yaga's in Russia and when I helped him by injecting the uh, werewolf serum into him and how how he's caused all this chaos because of that. I feel responsible for this and I hesitate just a little and pull back away from it. Yes, that's right. Pull it out. Save yourself. Let me free. And as he says that, I fall into the nail and push it in further. Oops. And I drive the nail the rest of the way in. You lean your body into the nail to push it the rest of the way. Jake, you see this black energy coming from the nail ripple through TJ and Koshe again as they both let out a scream of pain. Uh, no, I've got, I can't lose you. When another hunter dies in play, you must spend luck to save them. If you are out of luck, you take the tremendous hit for them instead and die in martyrdom. So I will spend a point of luck. Jake, you reach out around Koshe, grasping at TJ. You're trying to draw some of this death magic off of him, and you feel this energy rise up inside of you again. But as it does, you can feel it being siphoned off of you, draining away. And it's a sensation you felt before. And as you glance up over TJ's shoulder, maybe 50 feet away, stands a man in a dark gray suit with neatly combed white hair. Behind his spectacles, his eyes glow with a golden light as he feeds. And as you feel that energy drained out of you, in your arms, Koshe and TJ both crumble to dust. There's a pulse of white energy from the spot where Koshe was a moment ago, and comets of energy of all different colors soar into the air, smashing the protective dome. There must be hundreds of them, and one of them, white and shimmering, loops back towards the ground and slams into you, and in a flash of white light, you vanish. Tass, you have seen the Argonaut off in the distance, and everything is quiet. And then the dome, which you see just in the distance, 
pulses and fizzles out as streaks of energy of all different colors race off into the sky in all directions. Oh, shit, 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 shit. And I am running as fast as I can for the dome. Jake, here you are in this familiar white liminal space. You are dressed in your divine armor and you can feel the familiar weight of your hammer in your right hand. And in front of you appears the defender. Hello, Jacob. It's good to see you. Send me back. Send me back, please, immediately. My friend is dying. The friend that you tasked me with protecting from death is dying. I need to go back and get him. I'm sorry, Jacob. He's gone. I want to talk to death. You just destroyed him. No, not, not Koshe. The other, the guardian of the Black Gates. The death of the other world we were in. That is not something within the realm of my power. What you can and can't do perplexes me. We are tethered to this realm. This is the world in which we have influence. You have found a way to travel between worlds, but that is not how it works for us. Tell me, what happened over there, Jacob? We went to this other world and came up against a lot of bad odds, and I died over there. And I met the the god who guards like the gates to the afterlife, and he made me an offer to go back if I worked for him, and I did, and I did a really good job. And so on the way out, he gave me a nail that I could use to kill Koshe if it pierced him through the heart. And that would restore the rest of you and restore balance in our world. There is a power in you, Jacob, that allows you to channel the divine energies of gods. It makes sense to me that in another place you had the same ability. But that nail would be much like the hammer. Only you could withstand wielding it. Nobody told me that. So you don't, you don't know. You don't know the God. You don't know the answers. You can't undo the death or you won't. You can't put me in touch with anybody else. There is no undoing the death. What was done to Koshe, what let us free, was him being unmade. That is the only way to kill a God is to unmake it, which is something we could not do all those years ago when we attempted to stop him. So TJ has not died. He faced the same fate as Koshe. I am sorry. But you have done great things here, Jacob. No, I haven't. I just failed. You gave me a job, and it was to protect him, and I didn't. He's dead now. And if you can't do anything about it, then this whole thing's a fucking sham. Your job was to protect him until his destiny was complete. Okay, well, then I need a new job, and I'm picking what it is. I'm gonna kill Gregory Nash. And as you say these words, the hammer in your hand starts to glow and shift and becomes this large, dark, two-handed flaming sword. And your armor, which is pristine, starts to become jagged and dark. And you look back up. The defender is no longer there. It is the executioner. I knew in time you and I would align. And he snaps his finger and you vanish. Tash, you are running through Santa's village and there is a burst of flame, and Jake appears. He is holding a flaming sword, and he's wearing dark armor, and in front of him is scorch marks and ash. Whoa, shit. Uh, dude, uh, Nash, Nash, uh, the Argonaut was surfaced. It was, it was vampires. He, he could be here already. Uh, I'm, I'm looking around to see if he is where I saw him. He is not. He already was. Oh, shit. Okay, um... What happened? Did Koshe come yet? Koshe's dead. TJ's dead. He, uh, he got the nail, and, uh, I, I pinned Koshe so that he could get him, and he did. And, uh, no one ever told me that it had to be me, so he couldn't take it. There was death magic, and I, tr I tried to save him. I did everything. I did everything I could to save him, I swear. But Nash was here. He was right there. And I watched him. I watched him... Steal the luck right out of the air. And then it was over. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, get Damien. Uh, get him, get him on the line. He can be here. He'll grab the soul like he grabbed mine. It's... <laughs> I talked to the Defender. They said that you can't do anything. Nobody can do anything. You don't kill a god. You unmake them and they unmake you. TJ's not dead, man. He's just... He just isn't anymore. Uh, okay. Um... I can't. That can't be it. I just grab Tass and give him a big hug and I think just start weeping into his shoulder. And as you're both standing there holding each other, you do realize that while you don't see Nash anywhere, now that you're a little closer, you can see something laying in one of his footprints. 
It's a piece of paper. I'm going to go grab it. What is it? It's a note. In a simple scrawl, it reads, I warned you what would happen if you kept interfering with my plans. I'll hand it to Tass to read. I need you to promise me something with your fancy new sword that we both have our weapons in his fucking guts when we take him out. Absolutely. And as the snow begins to fall once again, Jake reaches out his hand and places it on Tass's shoulder. And in a burst of flame, they vanish. End of Season 2 So normally I, as you all know, I'm a big fan of cliffhangers, but I didn't feel like I could let this week's episode go a week before we talk to you again. So first, obviously, the end of this episode is a huge spoiler for listeners that aren't caught up yet. So you have all been great in the past about keeping our social media and the Discord spoiler free. So we are asking you to do that as much as possible for the next few weeks. Um, Secondly, TJ has gotten a full time job as a teacher, which is super exciting for him. Congratulations, TJ. Thank you. But it does mean that his schedule is pretty heavy now and he commutes to get here to record. uh, So he is not going to be able to join us with his schedule any longer. Or on that teacher's salary. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But we do want to thank TJ, of course, for everything he has brought to the show the last two years. Thank you. Yeah. So we are going to take a little bit of a break. We will be back with the main show, The Other Side of the Coin, on July 1st. But that does not mean that our feed will be empty for the next five weeks. For the next four weeks, starting next week, what you're going to hear is the first story arc for our new Patreon show. Um, We're going to release it out to the public, and then it will pick up in the Patreon once that is over. So you can tune in next week to hear the new project we have been working on. You'll get the first full story arc. Do we want to wait and like announce what it is next week? Yeah, let's keep it. it let's keep it a secret for now. Okay, uh, and then that last week of June, we will have a Q and A for season two of the main show. Uh, so if you have questions from season two, please send those to us on Discord, on Twitter. Uh, you can email us at the cast at the crit show podcast.com or you can go to the crit show podcast.com and submit them through the contact us section uh, and we will answer as many of those as we can during the q a episode that'll come out on june 24th uh, so again for the next four weeks you're going to get to hear the brand new show we have been working on on the 24th we will have a q a and then on july 1st we will be back with the beginning of season three So thank you all again for listening for the last two years, for supporting us and sharing your love of the show with other people. Without you, none of this would be possible. So thank you again so much for everything you do for us. Um, And I think to go out on, TJ had a few other options for his last words. So enjoy this brief clip of his other options, and we will see you next week. And I lean into the nail. No way, Koshay! <laughs> and I lean into the nail. Nailed it! <laughs> and I lean into the nail. In Soviet Russia, nail hammers you! <laughs> and I lean into the nail. Hadouken! <laughs> and I lean into the nail. Dynamite! (laughs) (laughs) And I lean into the nail. In Soviet Russia, nail gets crocheted. What? (laughs) It just fell apart (laughs) again. I'm sorry. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.